Well, uh, it's build time currently, and um, so that triggers me to post a new screencast. Um, I'm talking today about Visual Studio 15 Preview and Visual Studio 2015 Update 2, which are uh, kind of uh, influencing each other. And I want to show you some things that I discovered already. I had not so much time, but I wanted to share my um, thoughts with you. And if you're interested, then just follow me for the next minutes. Okay. So what I opened here is um, an installer for Visual Studio 15 Preview. It is in preview and it is not so stable and not so sophisticated like Visual Studio 2015, of course. But it's a cool approach, I think, to um, enabling developers to install Visual Studio very fast. Um, it is in Visual Studio Enterprise, what I have here. And what you see now on my screen is um, the installer, the new installer for Visual Studio, which is more modular and um, pretty fast in installing. I first installed just the core components here. Um, this took about two minutes um, here on my local machine and it was ready to go. But what you have to know, after you installed this, you can't do uh, anything that you expect to be able to do, like um, installing uh, or creating um, uh, Windows applications, stuff like that. To do so, you have to install this module at least. So I did this already. So I want to show Visual Studio 15 Preview now. I open it. That's it. Um, I just um, wanted to <laughs> make one Visual Studio because I will switch to Visual Studio 2015. I wanted to make it uh, dark style, the new one, but unfortunately they are sharing, because I logged in, they are sharing the settings and so um, I just have to tell you all the time when I'm switching to uh, Visual Studio 2015, I um, try to do it not so often. Okay, this is Visual Studio 15 preview and as you can see it's um, looks it looks very similar and if I go to find new project, you can see that uh, you have a lot of stuff from Visual C, C Sharp and Windows and so on, but you, um, what, what you see too is that there's nothing about web or something like that. You have to install all the stuff um <coughs> separately. Um, what you can see too, if I just create a WPF application, let's say, for Windows stuff, it's not ready. Visual Studio 15 Preview is not ready in um, certain kinds. Uh, for example, you see here's no syntax highlighting in the XAML and um, there are other things that are not ready. For uh, instance, I go with you to tools, extensions and updates. And as you can see, when I go to the online section, there are not the um, used ones at the top and um, I can tell you like VS color, VS color output is one extension I use very uh, heavily because um, uh, another extension was not ported to, to, to uh, Visual Studio 15, the VS commands extension. So as you can see, not all extensions which are available to Visual Studio 2015 are available here. So that will come in future, I think, because all the extension makers have to um <coughs> set up their packages, their v6 packages accordingly. But um, one extension that you have to install first is, w because it's not installed by default in the 15, is the NuGet packet ma uh, package manager, which has some new stuff. It was updated for Visual Studio 2015 too. And um, <coughs> it has a lot of cool stuff, i show you in a minute. And you have to install it by your own. That's uh, very important to know. So when you did this, you can just normal hit F5. And after a few seconds, you see the normal behavior. OK, so just let's break for a minute and switch over to Visual Studio 2015. Update 2. I open it. This is Visual Studio 2015 Update 2. And I just prepared an, a little project, the WPF application 2, to show you a difference, a very obvious difference. 
first one is, as you know, there is IntelliS um, syntax highlighting and stuff like that. Um, there is a strange behavior with 100% like it was. There's changed nothing. So, and now when I hit a 5, something different appears in WPF project, and this is this toolbar. It's called the in-app toolbar for WPF, and it's very, very cool, because it gives us access to some features which were in Visual Studio 2015 since um, a lot of time, but uh, a lot of people didn't know about it, and it was very hard to access them. So, for example, the live visual tree. Uh, it is very useful for uh, developers uh, for WPF and when you go on this live visual tree it brings you back to Visual Studio and brings you directly to the live visual tree and the live visual tree has uh, some cool stuff um, which you normally know from tools like web developer in, in uh, the web uh, part uh, as you can see here in the top there is an enable selection uh, this is not nothing new to Visual Studio, but a lot of people don't, don't know this. And I go to this one and go back to my app. Sorry. Just open my app. And I should be able to, yeah, to click on my button. You can see uh, slightly there's a little outline, uh, a red one, which says, hey, you have selected the button. And now I can watch all those properties. And I can even uh, click on this show properties and it will open um, live property explorer which is very very useful because it shows me the calculated values the current calculated values and i even can change those values here and it changes it live without rebuilding um, in my project that's very useful so um, but the new stuff is this one the new stuff is that all this uh, features here are accessible directly from this in-app toolbar. This is very, very helpful. Good job, Microsoft. Okay, um, something else which is <laughs> which takes away a little bit of no, nerving uh, stuff for me is the tools, extensions, and updates section, which now enables me to say, hey, I've been installed, like, for example, Bundler and, and Minifier. And this um, extension is programmed so uh, in a special way, so it can automatically update now the extension without um <coughs> uh, having me to go into this um, into this menu or into this tool window and do it manually and restart my studio afterward. It will do all this stuff without restarting. It's just automatically happening. That is very useful, and I hope that there are coming more of those uh, extensions, like this one, for example. This is not enabled. I don't know why. Um, there has to be something. This is enabled. But some extensions, and I don't know why too, and <coughs> uh, require that I start it in admin mode to change this option. I don't want to change it right now, uh, and I have to see if, it, if it's um, uh, working. I see my Cloud Explorer is disabled. That's strange. But anyway, so um, I like this auto update feature. So, what is um, uh, what else in, uh, did I like? Um, I, uh, I missed a feature uh, in 2015 um, and I blogged about it. And it's back, this feature. And this feature is all about NuGet. Um, so, when I go to manage NuGet packages, there is um, an option back there, which was there in 2012, and this is this all uh, repositories feature. And this is very helpful because I have a lot of repositories. And um, before this update too, uh, it was not possible to say th this option wasn't there, this all option. And now it's back, and this enables me to say, hey, I don't know exactly where those new versions are coming from or where these packages are installed. Just look everywhere where you can for those extensions. That's back again, and that's good. So what's cool too, and I want to switch to another project type. Um, what's cool too is, let's say I will go to console application and say OK. And now I want to say something like var x equals just type 
daytime now or let's say um, new random with daytime now now sorry for this milliseconds so okay now uh, what's possible is to go uh, to go oh sorry for this I missed something um, is to just um, mark this and then run this in the interactive window before you do this you have to enable the interactive mode on your application which is a feature which which is also not a new feature but is missed by a lot of people so to show you this um, I um, have a problem with my resolution but this one uh, fits on the screen you have to right click your project and then say initialize interactive with project you go there it's building and it's just um, giving the interactive window the context of the project where you right clicked so now you can mark something in your code and just give it a little bit more meaning let's say next and now I mark the complete term which I'm interested in at and be sure not to mark the sem uh, semicolon and just right click and now you can see the option uh, because it's out of the window scope it's called execute in interactive normally it should be light bulb here next to the selection but this light bulb uh, does not appear in my case so um, I don't know maybe because I'm installed resharper and it's uh, coming in the way of this light bulb I don't know exactly but trust me there's there's an option which says execute in interactive and if I click on this it will I just bring the interactive window inside again where it is you can see it there and it's just pasting in um, this uh, code snippet which I'm marked and it's given me the result uh, important to know that if you just um, paste in I can do it this way too I just copy this one and this time I will execute it with semicolon when you do this nothing happens because the semicolon says hey he's he, he wants to write more lines and I'm just waiting um, I'm not calculating the stuff now or giving the output and that's why you have to do it without and then it uh, gives you the result so that's um, very very cool okay um, another thing which is important more for people which are not dealing with reshaper and this was kind of funny uh, during the presentation on the on the first uh, day of um, MS build or build conference 2016 there was a program manager from Visual Studio she was um, uh, presenting the stuff and uh, showing all the kinds of uh, uh, new cool features and a lot of features didn't work sadly uh, and sh she so showed something which is pretty normal to users of reshaper and I guess there were a lot of reshaper <laughs> guys in the audience so um, there was no applause for it and uh, she thought it would be and it was, um, oh, sh it was sad to me a little bit. So Visual Studio now has a lot of stuff, you know, uh, implemented, which formerly was um, uh, just accessible in tools like ReSharper, which are very cost intensive and so on. And now I switch over to Visual Studio Co um, 15 uh, preview again to show you those features and to s uh, say something I just prepared and s uh, want to introduce variable sum var equals to hello so this is um, something this is uh, pretty normal and um, now there is another options part in the options window just make a little bit smaller uh, it's under text editor and C sharp it's language specific and it's uh, code styling so this is a lot of stuff which is um, which is in tools like ReSharper and now it's in Visual Studio 2 it's pretty cool and it's uh, based on Roslyn um, code analysis and for example you can say now that uh, let's say general that you would prefer to use var it's um, 
it's built in already but now you can say hey if it's not used treat this as an error so i do this and we wait a little bit i think a little enter should help save it it should work just build this It succeeds. It's it's not working here in my case. Just a second. Maybe I missed something. Prefer oh, I just did it the wrong way. Sorry. Let's see what happens now. Just wait a little bit, and keep in mind. Yeah, keep in mind this is a preview version, and it's not so fast it should be now. You can see it's treating the string here as an error, and it's um, presenting me hey use var instead. Uh, including a preview if I just use this light bulb but what would happen so if I build this I succeed because it is valid C sharp right now but it's it, what it what it means with treated as an error is it's shown as an error so it shown here uh, with a red one so it hints you to the point hey you should do something it's not um, FX cop um, uh, style errors which will be built errors too it's just errors to be shown to you okay so to sum up all the stuff which I mentioned um, I'm mm, want you to um, I wanted you to just know uh, what I'm uh, what I find cool in the in the Visual Studio 2015 update 2 and uh, I want to share with you some thoughts about Visual Studio 15 preview uh, it's a good approach. I think it's a little bit uh, of uh, way to go um, still, but it's a cool um, stuff. And there are pr a lot of more uh, news in, in the Visual Studio um, update too. Uh, for instance, the Git uh, implementation is better. There is a lot of stuff in uh, terms of uh, um, uh, just let me see SQL Server data tools were updated too. I have to check this. Then the complete um, TypeScript implementation is, um, um, is is better than it was before. Analytics is better, and many many more stuff. Framework 461 is uh, included, and uh, as a bootstrapper for click once, for instance. So be sure to check this out. Um, watch the videos um, f uh, on channel nine. Um, and uh, I come back with news if I find something. Thanks.